Okay, guys, welcome. Today we're going to talk about solving quadratic equations. Now, before we start, I just want to make a comment that in this entire chapter, whenever we take a square root, so if we have something like x squared equals 25, um, in the previous uh, chapter, we said that we would be worrying about uh, only the principal square root, but here I want to make the distinction that when we sort of take the square root of both sides, that we are going to get plus or minus. All right, so in this chapter, I want to be clear that whenever we take a square root, we are gonna get plus or minus here. Okay, so with that being said, the first form that I wanna take a look at is when we have no x term, right? So of course, any quadratic uh, equation is something like ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. But in this first one, we're going to assume that there is no b term, right? So there's just something times x squared plus a number, um, and that equals zero, right? Now, of course, if you want to solve uh, for x in here, all that you need to do is you need to get x squared by itself, and then you just take the square root, right? So that's what we're going to do. So for example, in part a, we have 3x squared minus 8 equals zero. So of course, first we'll add the eight to both sides and we'll get a three X squared is equal to eight. Then we just need to divide by three so that X squared is completely by itself. And then finally, we'll take the square root of both sides. So then we get the X is equal to plus or minus square root of eight over three. Right, but now we can fix this a little bit because we can think of this as square root of eight over square root of three. And of course we would need to multiply top and bottom by square root of three here. So we get that X is equal to plus or minus square root of 24 over three. And then last but not least, we can think of 24 as the square root of four times square root of six. So then we'll get that this is a two square root of six over three, of course, plus or minus. All right, so that's our first one. For part B, we have a four X squared plus 11 is equal to zero. So now when we subtract 11, we get that four X squared is equal to minus 11 and then divide by four, and we get that x squared is equal to negative 11 over four. And of course, in the past, this would have been a problem because we can't have something squared equal a negative, but now that we know about imaginary numbers, we can, we can do this just fine. So we're gonna get x is equal to plus or minus square root of negative 11 over square root of four. So if I fix the denominator, and I pull an i out, I'm gonna get a square root of 11 over two times i, right? Because my square root of negative 11, if I pull a negative square root of negative one out, that will just become i. Okay, so part c, we have x minus five squared plus nine equals zero, right? So now we have to subtract the nine over, we get x minus five squared is equal to negative nine. And now here, I don't wanna foil everything out on the left side, right? Because now we can just square root both sides right away. And we get that x minus five is equal to plus or minus and square root of negative nine would become a three i. And now all we need to do is add five And then that will give us an X is equal to a plus five. And then we have this plus or minus three I, all right? Now I haven't really said anything about uh, this plus or minus I, but I think it's good to see it sort of in this uh, particular solution. This means that you have two answers. One answer is five plus three I, and the other answer is five minus three I. This is just a nice convenient way of writing that, right? When we say plus or minus, we sort of are implying that there's two solutions there. 
Okay, let's look at the next one. Part D, we have a 4x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. Okay, so let's give myself a little more room. So here we can add 9. We have a 4x squared is equal to 9. Divide both sides by 4. And that'll leave us with x squared is equal to 9 over 4. And this will be nice because now once we square root, both of these are perfect squares. And we get x is equal to plus or minus 3 over 2. Okay, and then part E. We get a 2x squared minus 15 is equal to 0. So let's add 15. And we get a 2x squared is equal to 15. So now divide both sides by 2. And we get an x squared is equal to 15 over 2. So now when we square root, we're going to get x is equal to plus or minus square root of 15 over square root of 2. So now when we multiply top and bottom by square root of 2, we get plus or minus square root of 30 over 2. And if you look at 30, it looks like we should be able to take something out, but we can't, right? Because the perfect squares are 4, 9, 16, and 25 that are less than 30, and none of them will divide that cleanly. So those are our answers for x. All right, so hopefully those aren't too bad. If you don't have the, uh, the b term there, it's, it's not too bad. OK. Now, the next type of equation that we're going to talk about is when you can factor the quadratic, right? So if you haven't viewed the videos on factoring quadratics, uh, you know, you might want to take a look at them, or if you want to refresh on them, that wouldn't be a bad idea either. Um, but when we can factor a quadratic, we can use the property that if we have two numbers being multiplied together and the result is zero, then that means that either A is zero or B is zero or both, right? So when we factor a quadratic, we usually get something like X plus A, X plus B equals zero. So that's going to imply that X plus A is zero, which would then give the X is negative A, or x plus b is 0, which means that x equals negative b. So that's sort of the strategy that we're going to use if we can factor. OK, so let's go ahead and do that. So in part a, we have an x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. So now if we factor, I need two numbers that multiply to a negative 3 and add to a positive, uh, sorry, to a negative 2. So that's negative 3 and plus 1. So then if that equals 0, that means that either x minus 3 is 0 or x plus 1 is equal to 0. And this gives me that x is equal to 3. And this gives me that x is equal to negative 1. OK, part b, we have a 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. So now this one we have to factor by looking at 2 times negative 2 which is negative four. And of course, two numbers that multiply to negative four and add to negative three are negative four and positive one. So we'll write this as two x squared minus four x plus x minus two. And then we'll factor by grouping. Okay, so now, if we factor each expression, now I can factor a 2x out of this one, and I'll get an x minus 2. And the other one's already x minus 2, so we can factor a 1 out. And of course, it's still equal to 0, equals 0. And now, so when we factor it, we have an x minus 2 will come out, and we're left with a 2x plus 1. Okay, so now each of these things can equal zero. We can get an x minus two is equal to zero, or two x plus one is equal to zero. And this gives me that x is equal to two. And this gives me that x is equal to minus one half once we solve it. 
Okay. Part C, we have a 3x squared minus 4x is equal to 0. Now, this one is nice because we can factor an x out. So now we're going to have x times a 3x minus 4 is equal to 0, and that's already factored. So this tells me that either x is equal to 0, which is already done, or 3x minus 4 is equal to 0, right? Each one of these things could equal 0. So now if I solve this one, we get a 3x is equal to 4. So we get x is equal to 4 over 3. Okay, now part D, if you go back up here, you'll notice that there's a star there. And let's see why. So we have x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. Right? And we want to try and factor this. So if we try to factor this, right, since x is uh, the x squared term doesn't have anything in front of it, we can hopefully factor it like this form if it can be factored. Right? But the problem is, is that if you're looking for two numbers that multiply to 1 and add to 1, you're going to be out of luck because you're either looking at negative 1 and negative 1 or positive 1 and positive 1, and neither of those add up to a 1. So this can't be factored. Right? But if, there should be numbers that should make this true, right? So we need another method. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at what that other method could be. Now, the first method that we're gonna look at is what's called completing the square, right? So what essentially is going to uh, happen here is that if you have a quadratic, right, we wanna make it into something that looks like x plus a squared. That way that we can square root it and solve for x easily. Right, so that's sort of the motivation behind uh, completing a square, right? So we're seeking a number k, such that if I add k squared, we get a perfect square. That's just, so that's exactly what we sort of explained, right? So the idea is that we want to add one half of the coefficient of x term, square that, and then add that. Right, so I think this is something that's easier if we see an example, right? So first we're just gonna complete the square. We're not gonna take it any further. I just wanna first talk about completing the square. So we have x squared minus six x, right? Well, my b term in this case is negative six, right? Whatever's in front of the x term is your b term. So I need to add whatever b over two squared is. Well, b over two, is negative six over two, which is negative three. And if we square that, we get a positive nine. So if we add a nine here, well, now we can factor this because it's a perfect square. This is just x minus three squared, right? Two numbers that multiply to positive nine and add to negative six are negative three and negative three. So that's a perfect square. And that's the idea. In part B, we have x squared plus 3x. So now my B is 3, and B over 2 squared is 3 over 2 squared, which is a 9 over 4, right? So if we add 9 over 4, well, now we can factor this as an x plus 3 over 2 squared, right? Because if you add, 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2, you get 6 over 2, which is 3. And if you multiply 3 over 2 by 3 over 2, you get 9 over 4. Okay, in part C, we have an x squared plus 8x. So in this case, your b term is 8. And b over 2 squared is an 8 over 2 squared, which is a 4 squared, which is 16. So if we add 16, you can now say that this is x plus 4 squared. Okay, and then finally part D, we have an x squared minus 7x. And if we look at b over 2 squared, that will be a negative 7 over 2 
squared, which would be a 49 over four. So if we add 49 over four, we get that this is x minus seven over two squared. And that's the idea behind completing the square. So now armed with this in mind, if the coefficient of x squared in a quadratic equation is one, then here's how we complete the square, right? So if there is a constant, you're gonna move that to the other side of the equation, right? And then of course you're gonna find k squared, right? You're gonna find k, which is one half of the coefficient of x, and then you're gonna add whatever that is squared to both sides. And then you're gonna solve for x. So let's do it a couple of examples. So in part A, you have x squared plus eight x minus one equals zero. Now your first move is to still try and factor this. If you can factor this, that's great, right? But in this case, there's no two numbers that will multiply to negative one um, and add to positive eight. So you need to use completing the square or later on we'll talk about that you can use the quadratic formula. So first let's move the one over, let's move that out of the way. So now we have x squared plus eight x, and I'll leave myself a little bit of room, and that equals one. Well now my b term is eight, and b over two squared, be an eight over two squared or a four squared, which is 16. So I need to add 16 here. But as soon as I add 16 to one side, I need to add it to the other side as well. So I'm not changing the equation. So now I can factor that left side as this is x plus four squared, and now that equals 17. Well now we just need to square root both sides. So if we square root both sides, we get that x plus four now is just equal to plus or minus square root of 17. So now when we subtract four, we get that x is equal to negative four plus or minus the square root of 17. And it may be gross, but that's what the answer is, right? It's negative four plus this irrational number, the square root of 17. Okay, now in part B, we have x squared minus three x, plus two is equal to zero. Now this one can be factored, right? If we do an x minus two and an x minus one, we could factor that one. So I wanna just show that you could do this either way. And this will give you pretty quickly that x is equal to two and x is equal to one. All right, now let's show it with completing the square. So we have x squared minus three x plus two is equal to zero. So if we wanna use completing the square, we subtract this two over. And I'll get an x squared minus three x is equal to negative two. All right, well now my b term is equal to negative three, right? So b over two squared will be a negative three over two squared, so I'm gonna get a nine over four. So let me give myself a little bit more room. So if we add nine over four to both sides, I'm gonna get that this is x squared minus three x plus nine over four. And then negative two plus nine over four, we can think of negative two as negative eight over four. So we're gonna get a one fourth. Well now, we can factor the left side as x minus a three over two squared, and that equals one fourth. So now let's square root both sides, and we get x minus three over two is equal to plus or minus one half, right? Square root of one is one, square root of four is two. So now we just need to add three halves to both sides, and we get that x is equal to three over two plus or minus one half. Well, this we can actually find, right? Because they're both rational numbers, so we can add them. So this tells me that x is three over two plus one half, which is four over two, which is two, 
And if I subtract it, I'm going to get x is equal to 3 over 2 minus 1 half, which is 2 over 2, which is 1, which are the two answers that we got before. Right? So completing the square will always work, um, but just keep an eye out. If there is an easier method, definitely do that first. Okay. Now the last thing that we'll talk about in this video is, well, what if you do have something in front of that x squared? Right? But if you factor the a out, of the entire expression and just complete the square on the inside of the parentheses, you can still get away with doing this. All right, so let's do a couple of examples, a couple more examples of that. So in part A, we have a 2x squared minus 5x plus 4 is equal to 0. So first let's move the 4 over. We have a 2x squared minus 5x is equal to negative 4. Well, since I have that number in front of x squared, that two out, I'm gonna factor a two out. And now I have x squared minus a five over two x equals negative four. All right, now what I actually prefer to do is let's divide both sides by two so I don't have to worry about that. And now I have x squared minus five over two x is equal to negative two. And now we just solve it as before, right? My b over two here squared is gonna be a negative five over two divided by two, so a negative five over four squared, so a 25 over 16. So that's what I need to add to both sides. So now if we rewrite this, we now have an x minus a five over four squared once we factor. And since negative two, we can think of as negative 32 over 16, we're gonna get a negative seven over 16. So now if we square root both sides, we're gonna get an x minus five over four is equal to plus or minus square root of seven over four times i, right, because we have a negative on the inside. And now we just need to add five over four. So now we get that x is equal to five over four plus or minus square root of seven over four times i. Okay, so that's part A. Part B, we can just do like we did before x squared minus 3x plus 2. Do we do this one already? This one looks familiar. x squared minus 3x plus 2. Yeah, we did that one in the last example. So that was actually, that must have been a typo. Last example. And then for part C, we have a 3x squared minus 4x plus 2 is equal to 0. Okay, so let's move our 2 over. And we have a 3x squared minus 4x is equal to negative 2. So now let's factor a 3 out. We get x squared minus a 4 over 3 times x is equal to negative 2. So now when we divide both sides by a 3, we have the x squared minus 4 over 3 x is equal to negative 2 over 3. Okay, so now my b over 2 squared is a negative 4 over 3 over 2, which is negative 4 over 6, which is negative 2 over 3. And if I square that, we get a 4 over 9. So if I add 4 over 9 to both sides, I can now factor the left side as an x minus 2 over 3 squared. And on the right side, if I find a common denominator, I'm going to get a negative 6 plus 4, so a negative 2 over 9. And now we can square root. And we get that x minus 2 over 3 is equal to a plus or minus minus. 
square root of two over three i, and then if we add two over three, we now have that x is equal to two over three plus or minus square root of two over three i. Okay, so that's some completing the square. Okay, so that concludes this video on solving quadratic equations. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.